When we were looking at isomorphisms, you might have thought that requiring our isomorphisms to not only preserve structure, but also be one-to-one -one and onto maps uh, was a lot to ask. And it's true, it is a lot to ask, but um, we did use the one-to-one -one and onto properties of isomorphisms to um, learn some of what we learned about them. Um, but relaxing the requirement of having a one-to-one -one and onto map does still give you a, an interesting kind of function between vector spaces. And so we'll name those kinds of functions. We'll call them homomorphisms. Um, so a homomorphism between vector spaces is just a function that preserves structure. So it doesn't have to be one-to-one. -one, it doesn't have to be onto. But it does have to preserve structure. Um, we'll also call these linear maps. Uh, the word in, depending on the field you're working in, the word, uh, the mathematical field you're working in, the word homomorphism can actually mean something different than this. Um, although it, it has a similar spirit whenever this word gets used. Um, but uh, I think I'll try to stick to the word linear map. Um, some people call these linear transformations. Some people save the term linear transformation for something slightly more specific than, than just a general linear map. So uh, I'll, I'll try to stick to the term linear map, but I might slip now and again. Um, it's a little strange to use the term homomorphism when we don't require one-to-one -one and onto, uh, as opposed to isomorphism, because my understanding of the Greek is that iso means equivalent, and homo means identical, and morph means shape, basically. So. Uh, isomorphic things have sort of exactly the same form, more so than homomorphic things. So I'm not really sure what the history of the terms is. But um, just, keep, just remember that an isomorphism is a homomorphis homomorphism, but also happens to be one-to-one -one and onto. Anyway, let's look at some examples of things that are homomorphisms. Um, of course, any isomorphism is a homomorphism, but there are lots of homomorphisms that aren't isomorphisms. So let's look at some examples. Um, so here is uh, something that turns out to be a homomorphism. We'll prove that it is in just a minute. Notice that it definitely can't be an isomorphism because it's between vector spaces that have different dimensions. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, in, for finite dimensional vector spaces, isomorphism or dimension completely characterizes uh, isomorphism classes. So um, so this map definitely can't be an isomorphism. But it is a homomorphism. To show that it's a homomorphism, we just need to uh, show that it preserves structure. So as with isomorphisms, we can do that just by showing that it preserves uh, linear combinations of two vectors. So let's take two vectors in R3. How about a1, b1, c1, and a2, b2, c2. And we'll check if we get the same thing, right? What we want to know is do we get the same thing as f of a1, b1, c1 plus f of, oh, sorry, I need coefficients. Uh, oh, I've used a1 already. Uh, what should I call my coefficient? How about x1, I guess, and x2? So do I, preserving structure would mean I should get the same thing as x1 f of a1 b1 c1 plus x2 f of a2 b2 c2. So let's check if this happens. Um, as with checking this for isomorphisms, this is a bit of a grind. It's not an interesting calculation. Um, and it takes a lot of writing, and none of it is particularly enlightening or insightful or trickery. It's just, it's just a lot to write. Um, but there will come a time in our understanding of homomorphisms where this we will have a deeper understanding of homomorphisms that will let us identify that this is a homomorphism uh, in a much more straightforward way. So, you know, we won't be grinding these through these sort of stultifying <laughs> calculations forever. This is just for now until we have more tools at our disposal. Anyway, to know what f does to this vector, we have to uh, actually do this or compute this linear combination in R3. So we get x1 a1 plus x2 a2. And then x1 b1 plus x2 b2. And then 
x1 one c1 one plus x2 two c2. Two. And now we can evaluate what the function does. So the function sends this to so a, which is this first entry, so x1 a1 plus x2 b2 plus x, oh, sorry, this isn't right, x1 a1 plus x2 a2, right? So that's playing the role of a. And now plus b, and b is uh, the second entry of this vector, so x1 b1 plus x2 b2, and so on, minus c, which is x2 c, x1 c1 plus x2 c2, this should be a 1. Okay, and then in the entry, second entry, 2 times x1 a1 plus x2 a2 minus b, which is x1 b1 plus x2 b2 plus 3 times c, which is x1 c1 plus x2 c2. Now, the thing is, um, by multiplying all these out and grouping, you know, grouping entries together based on the subscript of x that they have, we can rewrite this whole mess as x1 times a certain vector. So let's gather up all the pieces that have x1. So there's an a1 plus b1 minus c1. a1 plus b1 minus c1. And then in the second, uh, uh, yes. And then in the second entry, again, we can gather up all the terms that have x1 in them. So here's a 2 a1 minus b1 plus 3c1, right, coming from this term. And then we can gather up all the terms that have an x2 in them. And in the first entry, that's a2 plus b2 coming from here, uh, minus c2 coming from here. And then in the second entry, there's a 2a2 minus b2 plus 3c2. Okay, and of course this is x1 f of a1 b1 c1 plus x2 times f of a2 b2 c2, just like we were hoping, right? So that verifies that this function preserves structure, so it's a homomorphism, All right? Um, it is, this is not a, this is one to one, but this is not, or sorry, this is onto, but it's not one to one. So this isn't, uh, this isn't an isomorphism, but it is a homomorphism. All right, uh, so let's check this map. So there is, for any, for the space of polynomials, we get a map by evaluating at A, right? So we can pick any fixed real number A, evaluation at A, gives us a map from the vector space of polynomials to the one-dimensional vector space R. Right? And this is how it's defined. To, to do evaluation on a polynomial at A, you just plug in A. Right? So is this a homomorphism? Well, let's check. Uh, if we do this evaluation map on x1, p1, uh, maybe x isn't a good name, since that might confuse a scalar with x values. So maybe I'll call my scalars c's. So c1, p1 plus c2, p2. What is this? Well, this is the polynomial c1, p1 plus c2, p2 evaluated at a. But what does it mean to evaluate a polynomial that is a sum? Well, that's just the sum of the first polynomial evaluated at A plus the second polynomial evaluated at A. So that's C2, P2 evaluated at A. Okay, but what does the scalar product mean? How do you evaluate the scalar product of a polynomial with or at an x value? Well, you evaluate the polynomial at that x value, and then when you're done, you multiply by the scalar afterwards, right? And then same thing for P1, C, uh, P2, and C2. So C2 p2 of a, but of course this is exactly c1 times 
the evaluation map on P1 plus C2 times the evaluation map uh, on P2. Okay, so this is uh, this evaluation map is a homomorphism. In fact, every different x value gives you a different evaluation map. So this is actually lots of different homomorphisms. Notice that uh, p right here, the vector space that we started from, this is actually infinite dimensional. So the definition of homomorphism uh, for vector spaces doesn't de depend on things being finite dimensional. Uh, we will mostly work with homomorphisms only between finite dimensional spaces, but um, the same idea of hom homomorphism works for infinite dimensional spaces as well. And we might see an example once in a while just for flavor. All right, third example, let's look at the rotation by theta map from R2 to R2. Um, so homomorphisms that go from one, uh, from one map to another, uh, some, some people call these linear transformations, but uh, most, I think most people use for linear transformation, they mean any homomorphism, really. So I, I won't call these linear transformations. I might call them endomorphisms, I guess. Endomorphism, which is just a homomorphism from a space to itself. So I guess technically that you could call this an endomorphism, but that's not important. <laughs> um, OK, so let's show that this preserves structure. Um, and this, just for variety, I'm going to show that this preserves structure geometrically. Because remember, R2, since it's a Euclidean space that we can actually draw, we can think about it geometrically in terms of arrows uh, starting at the origin in the plane. So suppose we have two vectors v1 and v2. Okay. Um, and suppose also that we have two scalars, a1 and a2. Right? These are scalars. And suppose we do a linear combination. So a1 v1 is going to be some stretched version of v1. a2 v2 is going to be some stretched version of v2. It might be compressed if the scalar is smaller than 1, so maybe like this. Okay, And when you add these two things together, you get this result. Right? Because you add vectors in Rn, or indeed R2, just by laying vectors end to end, like, or head to tail, like this. All right, so let's rotate this by the angle theta. So we're going to do the. Uh, the function r theta. So what does that do? Well, um, I to draw this, I have to draw theta as if it's a particular angle. But just keep in mind that the argument that I'm making will work for any angle. Uh, so when we rotate this by theta, v1, right? it was over here. It's going to rotate somewhere else, maybe over to here, say. So here's r theta of v1. Okay? And the same thing will happen v to v2. Yeah, so here's theta. Right? Uh, no, that's not theta. Theta is the angle that we rotated, which is this angle. That's theta. OK, well, uh, v2 started down here. And we need to rotate by the same angle. So that's going to be about like this. So this picture isn't going to be perfect just because you know, I have to actually physically draw it. And so it's not going to be perfect. But you know, hopefully, you'll get the general idea. So uh, v2, or r theta of v2 is going to be about like this. OK. And what will happen, so now what is a1 times r theta v1. So we, we're just stretching it by some amount here. Stretch it by the same amount. Looks about like that. So here's a1 r theta v1. OK. 
Okay, now stretch V2 by the amount A2, so that'll look like this. So this one is uh, A2 R theta V2. Okay. And then we need to add these two together, right? So if we add these two together, we get this vector, this green vector, and this green vector is a1 r theta v1 plus a2 r theta v2. Okay. Now to check if this map really is a homomorphism, we have to check if it preserves structure. So we have to check is this thing, this green vector, is this equal to what we get just by rotating a1 v1 plus a2 v2. Well, take this green vector here and rotate it by the same angle theta. So, right, it was, it started over here, now it's rotating over to there. It's exactly the same thing, right? So these two are equal, and that means that this is a homomorphism. It does preserve structure. Um, if you're good with your trigonometry, you could write down this function uh, in terms of coordinates. So you could, if you know your trigonometry, you can actually write down formulas in terms of a, b, and theta to get the coordinates. And then you can explicitly algebraically calculate that this map, for any angle theta, this map is a, a homomorphism, a linear, uh, a linear map. All right, um, just to see an example of the sort of thing that isn't a homomorphism, uh, let's look at this one. So this is a, a function that we've run into before, a function on two by two matrices that we've run into before. And we've seen that it does have many interesting properties. In particular, it, uh, it is either zero on every row equivalence class or non-zero on the entire row equivalence class, which is a very non-obvious property. Also, it is involved in the existence of solutions of certain kinds of linear systems of linear equations. Um, but one thing, one property that it doesn't have is being a homomorphism. So it is a function from this vector space, uh, two by two matrices, to this vector space, real numbers, but it's not actually a homomorphism. And, you know, being homomor to be a homomorphism, you have to preserve structure, which is a universal claim about, you know, all possible linear combinations, or what the function does to all possible linear combinations of vectors. Um, so to prove that that does not hold, we just need a single counterexample, and counterexamples are pretty easy to come by. So here is uh, a sum of two matrices. If we compute the sum in the space of matrices, we get this matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then if we compute this AD minus BC thing, we get 1. But if we compare this to doing the function first and then adding the real numbers that result, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, if we do it this way around, right, f of 1, 0, 0, 1, that's 1 times 0 plus 0 times 0, that's 0. And then the second one is also 0, so we get 0. So you can see that doing the sum before the function or after the function changes the result. And that means that this function is not a homomorphism.